Welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of Shop Talk, presented by Pop Men with Ashton Thompson and A.J. Felker Racing. Thanks, Ashton, for uh, allowing us to come by and check out what you got going on here. Uh, first question I always ask everybody is, how did you get started in racing? Yeah, so I actually started racing when I was six. Um, my dad got me started in quarter midgets um, back in the day. Um, ran quarter midgets for a while, got out of it for a while, um, and then finally got back into it about two years ago. Um, did a couple things on the formula side and stock car side, and then I came back to my love of midget and sprint car racing. and. I found AJ here and he took a chance on me and now we got this whole team going. Gotcha. So whenever you, you race some Kenyan Midget stuff, yeah. what's been your favorite drive so far? Well, the Kenyan at Anderson was by far my favorite. Um, that was super fun to me. Um, just the speed of Anderson Speedway is amazing. And then obviously I got to go back and say, um, running with Will Kimmel out at Salem, that was, that was pretty awesome. Right. Um, you know, I definitely Salem and Anderson top two favorite tracks so far. And what a lot of people might not know is you technically were the first female to ever sail in the pole set, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. What kind of feeling was that like, especially in a place like Salem? Yeah, so honestly, I I wasn't really aware. Like, I didn't know until I pulled into the pits and Bill Kimmel was holding up this. And I was like, what? Like, right. what, what does this mean? And then he was like, you just had best time. And I was like, really? Um, so that's just kind of crazy, you know. Right. It didn't really kick in until afterwards when I found out that I was actually the first female that's ever sit on a pole at Salem Speedway. You know, however many years it's been right. open, you know, that's pretty crazy. And being from Salem too, like that meant a lot. To me. Right. So yeah, it was super cool. A lot of history at that track. Oh yeah, so yeah. Cool. Now um, you did race at the Chili Bowl for the first time this year. What kind of experience was that like? So that one's crazy. Um, that is kind of an eye-opening eye experience for me. You know, AJ told me coming in, he's like, you know, you're not going to get a lot of seat time, and it's it's going to be pretty wild. Um, the crazy thing to me was just sitting there in the pits, like having people come up to me and like wanting my autograph and stuff like that. Right. You know, they they knew who I was, and I didn't know who they were. You know, right. so that was kind of a cool experience for me. And then obviously being on Flow Racing, that that interview that they did, that was awesome. Um, and just being in front of the crowd, you know, right. there's like 10,000 people in that building, and it was just crazy. And the, the pace that you're at at the Chili Bowl, it's like go, go, go. Right. Um, especially that Saturday morning, it, it gets pretty crazy. So it's, it's fun. We're going to go back next year, um, you know, right. have some more laps under my under my belt, but overall it was a good experience. What uh, What's some of your 2023 plans? So, schedules and stuff yeah. like that. 2023, we're going to go racing in the Extreme Power Eye Series, maybe hit a few USAC races later on in the year, but I'll be with AJ the whole year. Um, may hit a couple sprint car races later on, some local tracks. Um, it's always been a goal of mine to run at Bloomington or Lawrenceburg, just because it's home, you know. Right, right. Um, may run a few mini sprint races too, maybe that first mini sprint race at Brownstown in March, may hit that one. Um, just to get more laps. Right. Yeah, that, that's what I need right now. 
I know you're an advocate for some more different organizations. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit. Like, yeah. what's some uh, these organizations that you are pushing? So last year um, we were focused on the NOCC. You know, I talked about that on your past podcast and stuff like that. Um, the NOCC was great last year. You know, they came on board, helped me out, and we were just able to spread awareness to so many people. And you know, I would really. Um, connect with women at the track, you know, when we talk and they'd be like, oh my gosh, you're advocating for a disease, you know, a women-based disease, and um, they really like that, and that was the thing that I came up, I was at the Chili Bowl, and some lady came up to me too, and it was like, this is just awesome what you're doing, so we hope to continue that this year and really push that at tracks and just spread awareness overall. Right. Um, I know you got some great sponsors back in you too, mm -hmm. so um, what, what some sponsors that you'd like to throw out there? Yeah, so I'd like to thank um, Lyle Clark at Trailer Alarms. He actually got me to the Chili Bowl. You know, he gave me the funds to go out there, and he really believed in me. And he's he feels a part of this team now, too. So he's going to come on and support us some this year, too. Um, we're looking at gaining a few more sponsors. If anybody out there would like to come on board with us, we are accepting new sponsors. Um, and, you know, product sponsors, too. Those are, those are fantastic. So I can't thank, um, you know, our coolant people enough. So, um, you know, really thank Lyle and for what he's done for us this year. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to do the fast five. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay, I'm going to ask five questions. You give me one word answer, or if you want to explain your answer, that's fine too. Okay. Um, favorite movie? Uh, Top Gun. Uh, favorite restaurant? Uh, Texas Roadhouse. Uh, biggest race that you want to win? Uh, probably Little 500. Little 500, that was a good mm -hmm. answer. We yep. talked about that before. So. Um, do you prefer a slick track or a tacky track? Uh, slick. slick. That's yeah. like the most, like the most common answer to slick track. Yeah. Um, uh, favorite vacation spot? Uh, probably Disney World. Disney. World. Big Disney fan. Got one more. Um, what is your favorite food? Uh, favorite food. I mean, I would say fruit because I'm trying to be healthy, but probably pizza. Pizza. Let's go with pizza. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't go wrong with that, right? right? All right, so we're going to uh, walk around the shop now. We're going to check out what AJ and Ash have going on here at AJ Coker Racing. And we're going to get AJ in here too, so we're going to do a shop tour, so stick with us. All right, so Ashley, uh, before we get into the shop tour portion, I do want to talk a little bit about your car. That This is the one you race with the Chili Bowl, yep. right? And talk a little bit more about your Chili Bowl experience. I know that's a huge stage for, yep. you know, Open with the drivers to get on. I mean, you got guys that race NASCAR that race Chili yeah. Bowl. So, yeah. talk a little bit more about your experience at the Chili so, Bowl and then. It was really cool because they actually pitted us right beside Chase Briscoe, literally right beside him. Gotcha. So, we had my pistol, we had Chase's. So, to have two Salem, or not Salem, but Southern Indiana drivers right. literally within 30 miles of each other, the car at the Chili Bowl right beside each other, that was cool. And, you know, I always looked up to Chase. You know, he, he's oh, from yeah. Mitchell, you know? Yeah. Who, who, Who's, yeah, and so to be beside him at the Chili Bowl was just a super cool experience. And you know, we talked like I talked to him Sunday, like when we were here having practice sessions. And people don't realize for practice at the Chili Bowl, you get maximum of eight to ten laps. That's I all you get. Yeah. So we'll go Sundays our practice day. So Sunday you have two sessions. Um, basically, they give you a number, gotcha. and we were number. I think there was like thirty someone. We were number like twenty eight. So for that first session, we had to wait like four yeah. hours before we even got called up to the track because they went like one through 32. And so we were set in session like 28. So we had to wait forever to even get on the track because of course you'd have cautions. You'd have people wrecking hot laps. Oh yeah. You know, and it's it's hot laps, so you can't expect too much. Right, exactly. And so, you know, I, I get ready to be pushed up on the, the track and I was sitting up there on the staging area and it was just like, crazy sitting up on the ramp you know like i always kind of did it in i racing would drive up on the ramp and just right. see what it's like but to actually be there in person it was kind of crazy and then obviously they push you out onto the track and then you know we maybe got a half lap and they said okay guys we're going green so we went green got four laps back and that and i mean that was for my first session and then we pulled back up and then they did it in reverse order so they did 32 to one so we had maybe five minutes in between our practice sessions. So we would wait four hours, then we had five minutes to so get ready rush, to go. Rush, yeah. Rush, yeah. And then, you know, obviously we had other guys running with us and then they went 32, 32 to one. So that's how practice went on. So 
Sunday. And we didn't get done at practice until about 7 o'clock at night. I don't think they got done. So we rolled in there, they practiced the start at 10. And there was, you know, that many drivers that went through. So Sunday was kind of crazy. You don't get much out of Sunday, but, right. you know, you've got to have those track times. Right. You know, even though it was just eight laps maximum, I had to have it. Gotcha. You know? So we didn't really learn a whole lot from Sunday because obviously the track changes so much throughout the week. Um, and then I ran on Wednesday. We were originally supposed to run on Monday, but then we switched it. We ran on Wednesday, so I have some time to watch and stuff like that. Um, personally, I think we should have ran on Monday. Right. You know, so it was fresh in my brain. So we, we know that for next time. Um, but, you know, Wednesday was just packed full of snow drivers. Right. So if you rewatched the Chili Bowl, it was just top to bottom. Yep. You know? And that's how it is every night. Right. You know? No matter what night you're going to draw, it's top to bottom. Right. And so I think uh, the other girl who was running on Wednesday was Taylor Reimer. Yeah. Um, she was on Wednesday. Um, so, you know, the Chili Bowl, it was a learning experience for sure. Um, but just, you know, it was a long week. It's a long week. That's what I was yeah. asking. Like, it had to be a long week. Yeah. Week. People don't really talk about, you know, the stress and the toll that it puts on everybody. I think everybody on this team was sick right. after we got back. You know, we were out there 11 days. By the time we moved in, wow. we, by the time we moved in, because Saturday is moving day. So we had to leave Friday night so we could move in Saturday morning. And of course, they pull you in, park the trailer, you can't touch the trailer until Sunday morning. Really? All the week. Yeah. So we parked um, that Saturday morning. So we got, we drove all day Friday, got to Tulsa, um, parked the trailer Saturday, then basically had all Saturday just, you know, hang out, work on the cars, yeah. and then um, we had the track rolling for practice Sunday, and then waited Monday, Tuesday, and then went Wednesday, and then had to wait again Thursday, Friday, and then finally went back on the track Saturday. So it's a lot of waiting. A lot of waiting around. Yeah. So that's why it was cool to have, you know, all of our cars were filled with drivers. You know, he rented them out. So we had guys, you know, out there. We had somebody run Tuesday, we had somebody run Thursday, and then Friday. So we had people on the track, you know, but it was a right. lot of work for well, AJ. At least something was going on yes. to kind of help the downtime. Yes. All right, so now we're going to go into the shot tour portion, so stick with us. All right, so now we're in the uh, shot tour portion of the video, and we've got AJ with us to kind of walk around and show us what they got going on here. Um, so where do you guys want to start at? Let's start with some of this older stuff over yeah. here, like some of these cars that like AJ raced back in the day. Let's just start there. Yeah, All right, go ahead. You guys right, walk over. Yeah, they were antique quarter but it's about, about, yeah, about a day standard. That's, that's what I started racing when I was, I don't know, 5 to 11, something What's, like that. Not to throw you out there, yeah. but like what age it, or what years are those? Probably? Well, the first one there, 14, that my, my great-grandpa built that like in 83. I was probably three years old. I actually drove it when I was three. I got a little bitty seat and pictures of me in it. And uh, that, that, uh, the next car there, it's a Stanley car, which is still, uh, Stanley still makes quarter minutes. I got you. Yeah. I don't know what you this day. I had a Stanley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's nice. We always ran in that Robbie Stanley Memorial Race up at Mini Indy. That was you. like the big ordeal up there. Other than the Brickyard, they had the big Brickyard race where all the 500, like the kids would come out and we race at IMS. Yeah. And then we all get to kiss the bricks. So that was pretty cool. Other great. than those two races, like, it's pretty awesome. I got you. So then this, this part of the shop here is. Well, it's a little cluttered. Right now, we need a little more room. As you see, we start walking through. I can yeah. try to stay organized, but this is pretty much the sheet metal area for doing the panels and radiator boxes. I got you. <clears throat> all pans, all tanks. We, uh, and kind of the front walls are tired, you know, the square car, silver crown stuff, and pit stuff, and uh, paving stuff kind of in the far end. And, then, uh, that's that's probably the last batch of cars we built. Um, started building well when I kind of started racing, you know, myself when I was five and, and, and raced uh, quarter midgets till I was like eleven and started running up like mini sprints and then run midgets, uh, TQ sprint cars and kind of quit at twenty three or four. Gotcha. And got into the fab side of building basically upright mini sprints and midgets and. Um, Pretty much hit it pretty hard until my dad passed away, like in '09, and then I, you know, he started Bill Felker racing engines uh, in like 1973, and I didn't want it to just die off. Right. You know, always been around it and uh, getting older and just 
I mean, building the race car is like building a house. You got to crawl all over it, right. be all around that you know. I mean, it's then it's you sell one, and you got to build the next one. Yeah. And at least with the engine deal, you kind of get it to your standard and get it back, and you got something to work with. Right. You know, but yeah, that's a TQ there. That uh, that's the last batch of cars we've built. I'm going to say somewhere around 18, maybe 17. My son would know exactly, but I don't know. We I'd, ha I'd have to count up how many different cars. We basically just built midgets like you see here and, and, uh, and that's like many sprints. All right, so we'll move in. And this this over here is the well, engine shop. Yeah, and once you come this way real quick, okay, yeah. you one yeah. more thing. Yeah. Uh, it's fine. Pretty much, this is, uh, this is a, the, the painted midgets that we've got. I've only got one left. Most of the time, when you're racing, a lot of people come in, they say, well, why do you have three or four midgets? You know, like dirt midgets right now, we got there's four sitting here. But when you're running two cars a night or you're running three nights a weekend and the stuff just tore up, me, I just get lazier as I get older and it's just easier to run another car. Yeah. And it is stay up all night and fix and do all that stuff. So we still got like four midgets and, and uh, that's our pavement midget. I've wondered about that with open wheels and cars because a lot of times, you know, you see if somebody getting the wreck or a fender or whatever, you know, you got a tie rock dangler or whatever. Sometimes yeah. it's probably just easier just to get another car out and then fix that one when it's, you get time. Like this car here, we built it a couple, five years ago. It don't have a lot of runtime on it, but it's uh, been built for the Chili Bowl. And, it, and like, it's got an 83 bottom rail and the rack's turned down and it, it wouldn't take a big hit outdoors. It would, right. It would, it would not fold up, but it would bend it up, I you know. Because the Chili Bowl don't have a plate roller or anything. Right. You know? And this this is our uh, our sprint car, which looks a little rough. It's, it's probably got about 25 shows on it. They, they, no matter how pretty you make them, the dirt and rocks is hard on everything right. cosmetically, yeah. you know. And um, um, but I don't know. I, I, the sprint car deal is is probably where a guy like me needs to be, you know, because it's close to home and all that, but you need an army to push one around. Right, right. You know? yeah. And the midget stuff, I don't know, I still, for some reason, I still love it. You right, know? yeah. <laughs> so where were this car race at this year, AJ? Well, uh, kind of hit and miss with it. You know, like we, we run some USAC races, like when they're in Pleasantville, Lawrenceburg. I don't travel with it a whole lot. I run Max Adams. Uh, He's probably done the best for me. We won at Lawrenceburg, run second a couple times, and um, just kind of hitting this whenever, you know, like, the reason I have a sprint car and silver crown stuff, uh, it's got like some people hunting fish, that's kind of their hobby yeah. to do. Yeah. The midget stuff's kind of a, and the engine stuff's kind of a job. Right. And I don't really hunt or fish, so we can run that. And you got this car, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel that void. But nothing planned really as of yet. Um, no, yeah. She, she's been on me about, you know, I wonder if her car was going to get a tire down. I, 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 I told her, I said, yeah, we, we would do it. I, I just want to get her more laps yeah. and, and the midget deal, and I wanted to go. My thing was I wanted to, I don't want anybody, I mean, it doesn't matter how great you are, you're going to have off nights. Right. And I wanted to test pretty much everything before we went and raced, yeah. you know, just to get laps. And uh, I thought we went to Circle City, that was a, I mean, we got a lot of laps and, and um, made both of us more comfortable right. going to the point, you know, so. So it's not out of the question yet. Yeah. No, not at all. Not out of the question yet. No. And I'll do this little This is, uh, this is our dirt silver crown car uh, and, and pavement silver crown car, which, I, I, you know, I haven't lost faith, but it's been three years, I think, since they've been on the track. I. I um, been busy the last couple uh, with we do Logan Seavey's um, Silver Crown engines, um, and that uh, it's taken a lot of time. And, and we run actually run our, our motor for, for my car one to four crown at Eldora, which um, was neat because I mean I get a kick out of doing customer engines, but to have something of our our own that I consider kind of like my baby that right. we put in and. It, we run third on the model with it too, right after that. So that was that was neat, but uh, also makes me like, man, I wish it was my own car. You know? Exactly, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So then, uh, basically, this is the the, the fab area for the, pretty much where we do. I mean, we do have a lot of stuff on this big table, anywhere from like engine stuff, repairing cylinder head, welding up blocks, uh, do all the welding uh, for axles and stuff, and like it's seat repair. 
That's the side jig. If you look like the aluminum fixtures on the table, that's how you build each side of a midget. And we stand them up over here on this jig. You stand the two sides up, connect everything like a pretty much like a puzzle, I guess, you know. And uh, but it all starts off to all 41, 30 chrome molly. Um, but it's a lot of work. You can see when you're making spuds. I mean, there's I'm not trying to sound cocky or arrogant, but I've had a lot of people that go, oh, I built that race car. No, you assembled it. When you start off with bare tubing and you make everything from scratch, that's you, then, then you're a race car builder. Yes, you know? exactly. And that's why I got no hair. But right. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to make a living off something. You know, if, if you enjoy doing it, try to make a living off of it, you won't. You, if you, I see, you hear people all the time, oh, I love my job, I love my job. And I don't hate what I do, but it's definitely stressful. Yeah. You know, because sure. you got so many people that you run across past, you become friends. But then when they don't race anymore, you don't see them for a decade. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's like, man, are they really not buddy? Or right, what? exactly. You know? So it's, it makes it tough. But yeah. Yeah, this kind of, like this metal here, we uh, it's set up just for like, when we built race cars a lot, we would yeah. set up for angles, so like for, for coping tubing, and, and uh, we got a couple of different lays, older lays here. This, this one here, we've used it for the race car side, but now we use it for polishing crankshafts. Um, we'll step over into here. Kevin's over here doing the like it's working, right? So, this is the last, really the last edition of uh, the engine side. Um, We'll, we'll go over there with the dyno and stuff next door. But like this is a sturdy head machine. Uh, it's like where you do all the seat and guide work for like where you do valve jobs and stuff on for cylinder head stuff. Um, then we got Chet's over here on the lathe. He's uh, I don't know where he's messing with something in the spacer. Um, let me show you a couple of mills here. More mills. Like this mill here is set up for a specific job, like for uh, for drilling a cylinder head. We do like all the boring on on this mill. Um, that's just to drill another another you know another mill for another. It's almost easier. Like people, a lot of people, like, well, you got three mills. What's well, easier just to leave one set up for one job than it is to break it all down and spend three hours sitting it back up. You know, that's a time saver for yeah. sure. It's a Burko BT6. It's uh, we do like all the line boring on it, like uh, for like 50, 55, 60 millimeter uh, babbit or roller bearings, or if you want to put four bolt main caps on something or just it's just uh, any, any type of line boring that's what it's used for and this is old storm walking um we deck uh blocks and uh mill head with that uh um, we have someone sitting up on there right now but basically it's got sitting rings that goes in the mains of the block and, a, and a, the bar sitting down there it's a two inch bar and it sits on it and um, that's kind of how that works and um this is my collection of clutter back here. It's basically <laughs> all, all the inventory of, of parts. You know, not everything that you need. There's a lot of new and used takeouts. I mean, there's lots of times mid-season and you need something for next week and you call. You can't keep everything in stock, but you know, you right. call somebody in this day and time, you know, you might be six to 20 weeks out. Absolutely, yeah. So and this is our crank balancer um, for crankshafts. This is actually a crankshaft straightener. Um, which, uh, yeah, a friend of mine, Bill Jones, dad muffler, um, I drove for him forever in many sprints and we were at uh, an auction together and we looked at that and I said, we want to get that because at the time we were thinking, well, we could put it like a bottom rail, like a snake, you could put it on there or straight in front axles. And I knew what it was for as far as crankshaft straightening, but we used it for a lot of different right. different deals. A lot of people say, well, you straighten a crankshaft? Well, yeah, you, you actually do. You know, right. if you have trouble with heat draws it together or four cylinder stuff or a flat crank, you know, it uh, you gotta check all that stuff. I got you. Then uh, Ashton, you gonna get into any of this part of it or you uh, I'm supervising right now. Oh you're supervising? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I mean maybe. Like <laughs> just, you know making sure. It's AJ's way or the highway sometimes, so it's kinda hard to learn, but <laughs> it's all right. Well I don't know, I'm a little stubborn. I get that from my dad <laughs> probably, you know. But just a couple sprint car motors. Um this is Mike Shotwaller's motor out of Illinois, and this uh, Max Adams. He's from California, but he lives back here now. Um, they were kind of late to get in, um, but we got about 25, I think. Some, where everything kind of comes in. We try to 
we made some makeshift tables for the winter rush, I call it. You know, I've got some stuff set up, but everything, I try to get on carts, all the internals, and then the blocks kind of go over that direction to the homing area. Yeah, and all the cylinder head stuff goes <coughs> next door. How long does it usually take you guys to get one in and back out the door? Like what's, what's, what's the time frame on something? <coughs> well, I don't know how to answer that question really. Probably depends on what's wrong <laughs> no. with it. Well, it did kind of in a sense. I mean, you know, if you had something that was, that was, you know, if it didn't have the rod slung out of it and you weren't getting the crankshaft and doing all that, you know, it, it, you could put one together in three days. I got you. But, but if you had everything here. Right. But most of the time, you know, three months, you know, and I try to tell that you know, a lot of people when I first started, you know, like, well, you, you need three engines. You know, you need one at the engine builder, one in the car, and one in the trailer. And in the day's times, you do. I mean, yep. if you're going to race every weekend. Right. You know, but I, uh, let me show you over here a second, a couple things. <clears throat> this is a, that's a line, line home for uh, for doing mains. And, and you could actually do cam, cam tunnels out when you can run. Uh, it's a small cam tunnel, but that's uh, like for roller bearings. I got you. Uh, so to get rid of the habit bearing, you know. This is actually, it's, this is a, what's neat about this home here is um, if you actually look over here, I've had it, it's been in like five or six different shops, but uh, it's got BF on it, which is Bill Falker, my dad. The uh, the thing about this home is, is, is I have pretty much, I've owned every block that we've ever done here. Right. Besides a good friend of mine, Red World, I said I'd let him, I trust him that well. Right. He hung on, he on two or three of them for me. Yeah. But, but uh, we've been busy or whatever, and I got, you know, it's just, but basically it's, and I, I dine on every motor, you know, personally run them. Right. But I, as far as everything else, you know, people who work for me have had their hands in a lot of stuff. I used to be real weird and just want to do it all myself. Do it all yourself? Yeah. I couldn't do it, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, that's uh, that green machine there. That's, that's a magnet flux machine. Um, magnet flux all the all the crankshafts and, and cans and rods and uh, there's basically everything sitting over here has got to get home and uh, gotcha. yeah so then basically yeah uh, let's see where we are over here we'll come down through here but, uh, <clears throat> it's usually not cluttered like this but but I've got you know like there's two engine motors here and there's an engine there and everything on cars but um, I think there's about four over here in different areas but this is a fuel pump uh, fuel pump flow bench for a manual fuel injection. We flow pumps on them, uh, nozzles. Uh, you can flow the whole system before you go to the dyno and realize you got a problem or you, you know, <laughs> a problem you don't want. You know, kind of get a good base by us. A valve grinder. This is a, a silver head flow bench. This right here is a camshaft doctor. It's a camshaft profile checker. Basically, that's the specs of the cam. You know, you can sit down with a degree wheel or, like, I can remember my, my dad years ago, the first thing he used to do was, before you had this stuff, was grind a camshaft, grind a number off the cam, you know, it's where people didn't know what it was, which you can sit down and figure it up, you know, with a degree wheel, but it take a lot of time. <laughs> so, this is where we do the cylinder head. Right now, everything, a bunch of heads here to get tore down. We do the assembly and uh, disassembly for the heads on this bench. And, um, basically, when everything kind of comes back clean on part and um, motor's back on the stand and the heads are, let's see here, there's a set of heads there sitting on a bench, done, valve jobs are ready, then um, come into the simple room and, and uh, uh, put everything, you know, put everything together here. Um, so, so this is kind of like here. surgery room, then, ain't it? Like putting, yeah, like the yeah, the clean, the clean, the clean room in a sense. Yeah. You know, I um, I think that you could have a shop and not have an assembly room if you kept it clean. Um, but it's just nice to where if you had a you know just roll everything in, you got everything right here, and you know right. everything's clean, and all the bearing clearances has been done, and. Pretty much the only thing you got to do in here is file fit the rings and uh, um, just make a bill sheet. I mean, every every, every agent we do, we pretty much um, we document the main bore size, all the parts that are in it, um, 
there's a cylinder head build sheet as far as all the valve heights, all the clearance. I just want a paper trail. Oh uh, yeah. Absolutely. I want something to cover cover my butt. The last right. thing I want to, I would rather a guy be mad at me for charging too much than me do a half-ass job. And then and something I, happened to it. And yeah, I get that call absolutely. at 12:30 at night on a Saturday when I'm trying to watch, watch Matlock or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that they lost the motor yeah. or something like that. So it gets all when it gets all buttoned up, we we bring it out and. Uh, Put it on. I got two different dyno stands. Actually, we got three different dyno stands, but that was set up for like small block Chevy, uh, like a big counterweight on the crank. That's why the hole's so big. But this is more of a this print bar rigid dyno stand. Um, what's kind of unique about this dyno is years ago um, you could you, you had to make stuff. Now they have different stuff that you could buy, but but still we, we bought all the important stuff up. I know very little about computers, but, and, uh, but as far as most sprint car stuff, you know, you have to push start them, and, and uh, so there's no way to have a, and the fuel pump runs right, right off the back of the cam, so you couldn't have a flywheel. I got you. And uh, to be able to start it on a dyno, like most dynos are, and so we made all this here, and it's got uh, a lower dampener, uh, it's basically it's rubber. Uh, for the harmonics or the four cylinders, they like to you know flat cranks. Like I said, they shape quite a bit, you know. Right. And uh, it's got you got a ring gear mounted on it. We built built all that, mounted the starter, built the stands, and it's uh it's pretty pretty neat. Yeah, and, you know, it's uh I think they sell stuff like this now that you can buy, but uh, I know years ago this was actually down on my dad had and. and they had a belt housing on it and a starter on a motor, ring gear, and they were and. Um, I was like, let me cut that thing up, Dad, and get. It's like, son, build a four cylinder. Don't pay the bills, you know. Right. Right? The VA stuff, and I. And so, finally, I, uh, I, I had to cut it up. Right. <laughs> Change it around. So. That's probably about it. Probably this. This I sold. I sold the machine. I mean, a lot of the equipment that I have is. Um, it's, some of it's older, but I mean, you know, it's, but if you take care of it, and it really doesn't matter, but you know, you've got to be a good operator. Right, absolutely. Know. Well, let's, let's go in here and go through some of the old photos and some of the like history behind, you know, yeah. AJ Public Racing that Ashley's going to have to live up to. <laughs> right, Ashley? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you guys know Will and Bill Kimmel, those are those. And just like, we'll go with them. So those will be asphalt motors in, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we. That's kind of weird how that the Salem deals all of a sudden. You know, I've helped Will a little bit with some stuff, and uh, and, and Bill. You know, and I always liked them and always known them. I just. Right. Um, but I've had a couple other guys bring me some stuff, and you know, I have, I have probably three or four of them up there, and it's um, not that I was too never too good to. Go that fender way. It's right. just never, never had opportunity to nobody come to me. Right. You know. Gotcha. I've always been an open wheel guy. You know. Um, this so, it's probably only going back to about '98. Um, I'd have been 18. Uh, I probably that's probably around '04. '04. Probably one of the last times I drove was probably '07. Um, that's me when I had a little bit more hair. I was probably 155 pounds in. <laughs> uh, I think that's 2,000. That's 2,000 when that is. Yeah. And uh, I'll sneak over here to this little little picture. Um, as you can see, I, I'm out of space. I got organized chaos, is what I call it. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking this is a little Salem. Um, I was. I'm thinking I'm 12 there. I think it's probably the end of end of '92. I'm gonna say. Um, and just some more more pictures. That's a. I think that's Anderson. That's probably O1. Um, Who is this picture here? What's going on there? Yeah, I, I know it. That's <laughs> that's Eldora and uh, oh. O1. That's that's what well, the motorhomes park. I don't know it's changed now. But yeah, it, yeah, I, I remember heard. that. But that's. I was pretty, yeah, that was that was on thrills and spills. That's not one of my, I, I don't know. I one of my highlights, but I always tried to stand on the gas. And if I if I thought 
that I had a shot and I was up front, I'd give it a little bit more. Right, probably probably right. too much, you know. But I won the Rich Vogel Classic in uh, Winchester. Um, I guess it was uh, 01, 02. Um, I'm trying to remember now. Um, trophies in the house. I don't look at it enough to remember gotcha. the date. But it was kind of a deal where it was Neymar's that took it over that year. USAC had stepped out, so it didn't get the hype. I got you. But at that particular time, everybody was there except the nine cars. And the nine cars are kind of like if you follow midget race, and it's like the Keith Coons cars of the day. Yeah. You know? Got you. So it still paid good money. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, that's my messy office in there right now. It's just <laughs> Everybody's got to have a and messy office, stuff right? in there, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I went out. There's, uh, there's a plaque there from, uh, well, let me bore you some more. That, that little deal there where it's got like six feature winner stickers on it. I guess yeah. there's a USAC race and then uh, five others. That would have been oh two or three. I was on my tail tank then. Um, that there's a putt 40 uh, classic race at Putnamville. It was a USAC race. Uh, I'm on there in 02. Stewart had won it two times and Billy Boat and Saldana and Bill Rose, Shane Hollingsworth. Um, they're right there from 04 in Tulsa. That's where uh, Dave Dolan, he, went, he drove my sprint car. We won a uh, sprint car race there. But, but um, that's about it for me. I don't know. There's a couple more pictures through there of later years, like from the 2020 Chili Bowl and then down to the Silver Crown car uh, that we bought. That, that particular one here, I mean, this car season, again, it's car. <laughs> <laughs> I go in a car. Yeah, that's, that's for my, my youngest. This, this right here is this is Chris Wynn. That was a good friend of mine. that got cancer and uh, passed away, and he uh, he run. I think he might have won the heat race, or he run second at the heat race at the coin, and he run the Chili Bowl um, that year. It was kind of his, his bucket list, and uh, that was pretty neat to do. Me and Chris, we had a. a we, Still here, I, we had a love-hate relationship in a sense because we were competitors and raced against each other, and then he continued on where I kind of stopped. So that was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, got you. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys letting us come up and check out what you guys have going on here at your race shop and uh, Tristan's. Or, sorry, Ashton's future. Because um, I think you got a bright future. So um, make sure you, you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Uh, share it out to whoever you want to share it out to and make sure that Ashton gets some uh, recognition for what she does and AJ gets some recognition for what he does. So uh, until next time, we'll see you down the road.